Welcome again to Connor's Talk. I am Russ Goldman. This is my match reaction, my five takeaways from Fulham's 3-1 victory against Ipswich Town in the Carabao Cup Wednesday night. I'll be sharing my five takeaways coming up. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other Fulham supporters find us. Also want to mention that I will have a preview of the Manchester United match that I'll be recording on Friday. As you might be aware, I just want to mention this, and I'll also be mentioning it on the preview show, that Foam Supporters Trust is sponsoring a protest that will be happening during the Manchester United match. As you get to Craven Cottage, outside of Craven Cottage, you will see an opportunity to pick up a yellow card. Please do pick up the yellow card and... During the match in the 18th minute, please put up this yellow card. This is a protest for the increase in ticket prices. So please do participate to make a difference here. This is a protest on the increase in ticket pricing for tickets for Fulham this season. So please do participate. It would help out a lot to make a statement during this match that's being broadcasted all over the world. So in the 18th minute, Please put up this yellow card. That would be a huge help to this protest. Like I said, sponsored by Foam Supporters Trust. I've also put my name on it as well. I want to support the Foam Supporters along with many other groups have put their name to it. Bloggers, podcasters, we're all behind this protest. Let's see if we can make a difference. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go to my five takeaways from this three-to-one Fulham victory. And I'll just start before I go through my takeaways that uh, three very good goals. I'll talk about that coming up. But number five is it was a solid victory, regardless of how many changes were made by both clubs to start the game. A lot's been talked about. If you go on social media about the fact that Ipswich Town made 11 changes, Fulham made several changes as well. But you know what? It's still a solid victory. It's on the road in the cup, and Fulham showed why they are a Premier League side. Listen, Ipswich Town beat Wolves, so this is a team that's on the rise, a team to be respected. Are they as deep as Fulham? Absolutely not. So if you want to make the argument that Fulham beat their B team, but then you could say Fulham played a lot of their B team. doesn't matter. They still had to win this on the road and show their quality, and they dominate throughout this match. It should not take away from the victory that you were missing some starters for Fulham and obviously several starters for Ipswich Town. It's still an impressive victory. I don't care what anyone tells me. It's a big deal for Fulham Football Club to move on in the cup. So if you want to marginalize it, go ahead and marginalize it if you support Ipswich Town. You're not going to get that from me. Because I got to see some debuts. I got to see some really good goals. Want to mention them. Tom Kearney, Rodrigo Muniz, and Harry Wilson all scored three quality goals. And Fulham dominated the play. So there's no reason to apologize for a dominating performance. I don't care who is playing on the other side. It's still on the road. It's still a cup match that both teams wanted to win. And Fulham just had the better quality overall to win this match. So that's why this is my number five. No reason to marginalize it. It's still a solid victory. Number four, and this is an interesting one. Foda Balotori continues to impress when given a chance to play. Now, he is the backup to Anthony Robinson, and I expect him to be the backup for the rest of the season. But... Compared to last season, I think it's pretty obvious that Fulham have a solid backup here. If anything was to happen to Anthony Robinson, if he got injured, if for whatever reason Marco wanted to give him a rest in a, in a Premier League match, I'd be all for seeing Foda Balotori get a shot here. I actually think he deserves a chance at some point to play. We will see if he gets a chance to start a match in the Premier League. but. He's really impressed so far. His crossing is great. I think his defensive play is solid, and I thought he was very impressive in this match. So 
I actually put out a poll. It's still ongoing. And I have 104 votes, which is a good amount of votes. And this poll on the Cottage Talk Twitter page was this. Is it time for Marco Silva to give Foda Balotori a start in the Premier League? Yes was at 59%. No was at 41%. So the majority of Fulham supporters agree with me that maybe at some point Foda Balotori deserves a start in the Premier League. This is not a slight on Jedi, but I actually see some things that Foda Balotori does very well. Now, he's not playing against Premier League sides. He's playing against championship sides. But I don't think it matters when you look at how well he crosses, how often he gets to the byline, how quick he is down that flank, just like Jedi. So let's just put it to you this way. I think it's great to have a good option besides Jedi, just like you do it right back with Kenny Tete. And then, of course, now you have Timothy Castagna. It's good to have solid backup at both fullbacks. It really is. And I think in all cases here, on both sides, I think you have four players that can start in the Premier League. And I couldn't say that last season. So I would like to see Foto Balotori get a chance to start a match in the Premier League. Will I see it this season? I don't know. But he has impressed when he's been given a chance to play. He impressed in this match. That's why that's my number four. Number three, Rodrigo Muniz played an integral role in the victory. Not only did he score a goal, but he helped set up the first goal. And this is a player that I can get behind a player that had a terrible season last season. When he came to Fulham, we didn't know exactly how good he was going to be. I I don't think we know that at this point either. But when he's played in the cup matches, and even when I saw him in Philadelphia, I thought he impressed me a little bit. So for me, I think Rodrigo Muniz is trying to make an argument to get a start in the Premier League. Now, I don't know if Marco's going to go there, but he actually had a good performance against Brighton. He's followed it up, I thought, with a very good performance here against Ipswich Town. Here is a player that offers you the hold-up play that you need. He also has some speed, and he was able to finish and score a great goal, but only also set up a teammate. So for me, very good performance from Rodrigo Muniz. I don't know if this means you should be starting in the Premier League, but you know what? I think it's great when you have a player that is trying his best, giving you 150%, and he rewards you by scoring a goal and setting up another one. So this is all good news from Fulham Football Club, and congratulations to Rodrigo Muniz for a good performance against Ipswich Town. Okay, let's go to number two. Luke DeFigurals gives a man-of-the-match performance in his debut for Fulham. In fact, on the Fulham Twitter account, he won the vote for man-of-the-match. So congratulations to Luke. I thought he was very impressive, very assured of himself. Now, did he take risky chances with passes? No, but he was solid throughout and just looked very confident. Here's a kid that is 18 years old against Ipswich Town on the road in a cup match and looked assured of himself, just like I saw in Philadelphia. I would have no issue if Marco decided to start him in a Premier League match. I'm going to say it right now. I think he keeps showing that he belongs at Fulham Football Club to potentially be a starter. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be a starter this season, but I think if you asked him to start, I think that he could handle it. Now, obviously, there's a huge drop-off between Ipswich Town and the Premier League, but I saw him play against Premier League teams. I did. And he, again, looks extremely comfortable, just like he did last night. He deserves all the accolades that he's getting. Congratulations, Luke, because you've really earned this. I also want to give a shout out to Devin Tanton who made his debut and again two 
young academy players playing with the first team. This is all positive news and two defenders as well. So I want to see young players get a chance to play. Yes, it's a cup match, but I think they're also showing that maybe, just maybe they could make that next step. And I think in the case of Luke, I think he's ready to make that next step. So we shall see what happens beyond this, but Luke deserved man of the match. So congratulations to Luke. Coming up next to end this episode, I'm going to give you my number one takeaway for Fulham's victory against Ipswich Town. Okay, my number one takeaway is this. Fulham have a legitimate chance to get to the semifinal. They are facing Everton at Goodison Park. Not an easy place to play, but Fulham have won there the last few times, so they should feel confident going to Goodison Park. The time before Christmas is a difficult time to have this match, but you know what? I give Fulham a very good chance to moving forward and get into a semifinal, which we all want to see. It'll be interesting to see what Marco's approach will be when we get there in probably about six weeks' time, six or seven weeks' time. But you know what? I think they have a legitimate chance to get to a semifinal, and then who knows what happens after that, one step at a time. But I'm fine with the draw. I wish it was at Craven Cottage, but I don't have any issue with them playing Everton at Goodison Park, partially because uh, I think we got Everton's best player now, right? I would like to say in Alex Iwobi, we got their best player. I think he was their best player. I know people make the argument for Calvert-Lewin, but he can't stay healthy. So I think that's advantage to Fulham. I give them every opportunity to get to a semifinal. In fact, I know it's far off in the distance, but uh, I wouldn't bet against Fulham. In fact, I might consider putting a bet on Fulham to get to a semifinal. Probably won't because I'm not a betting man. But if you are, it might not be such a bad bet because I, I like Fulham's chances at Goodison Park. And I also like Fulham's chances with Marco Silva going up against Sean Deitch. I actually think he has Deitch's number here. So I think Fulham have a very good chance to get to a semifinal. We shall see. That's still a ways away. Okay. Very interesting to go through my five takeaways. As I mentioned earlier in the show, there will be a preview of the Manchester United match on Friday, and I will mention one more time about the protests happening at Craven Cottage at the 18th minute with fans being asked to put up yellow cards, and they'll be able to hold up this yellow card in the 18th minute. Okay, well, that's going to do it for this episode of Cottage Talk. My name is Russ Coleman. Thank you as always for watching and listening to Cottage Talk, part of the TalkSport Fan Network.